Ojo, welcome to Wasa Distance Education Center's radio Zoom classes. This is MEL3E, Grade 11 Workplace Math, and I am the teacher, Bronwyn Slate. If you'd like to participate live today, you can call the Wasa Studio at 1-800-465-7144 or 737-4017. You can listen on the radio at 91.9 FM and also on the television at Bell Express View Channel 972. You're always welcome to join me live through the Zoom link, which is available both from me, your teacher, and also your DEC. Our classes are scheduled from Monday through Thursday, 9 until 10 in the morning, and we are in our second week of our nine-week course. So a reminder of what work to submit for marking as you start to look at the work. The support questions, the ones with the pencil icon, are not for marking. You can decide which ones and how many to do. If you understand the concept, feel free to skip questions. You don't have to do the work just because it's there. But if you need more practice, please ask, and I'm happy to give you more practice. The key questions are the ones with the little key icon, and they are the ones to submit for marking. So please do all of these questions, showing all of your work, your steps, and your thinking. So then how do you submit your work for marking? There's three methods. The first is to scan your work and send it electronically. You can scan your completed work through a device. If you have an Apple device, the Notes app has a scan function. And if you have an Android device, the Google Drive app has a scan function. These are free apps that generally come with these devices and are pretty straightforward to use. If you need support to learn how to use them, I have tech tutorials on my YouTube channel that will walk you through how to use both of these apps so that you can really figure out what are the tools that you have. And if you need more support, feel free to contact me and I'm happy to walk you through it. Then once you have it scanned, you can send your work through email to studentwork at nnec.on.ca and cc it to me, bronwyn.slate at nnec.on.ca. Or you can also send it to me through Facebook Messenger where my name is B. Slate Wasa. The second method is to drop your work off in Sioux Lookout. We have an outdoor mailbox at 74 Front Street. We are the bright red building next to the post office and we have a small white mailbox next to our side entrance. The third method is to hand in your work to your DEC. Your DEC can either send your work through the express or fax it to 807-737-1732 or toll free fax to 1-800-463-7852. Students are also welcome to fax their work in if you have access to a fax machine, though it's a good idea to give us a call or send me a message to let me know that you have faxed it as sometimes things go missing with our fax machine. If you'd like to connect with me through social media, both my Facebook and my YouTube channel are under the name B Slate Wasa. You can friend me on Facebook or subscribe to my YouTube channel, and then you'll get notifications every time I upload one of our uh, radio Zoom classes. All of our radio Zoom classes are recorded and I post them shortly after airing to my channel. And then also on my channel, there are short videos that explain common errors or confusing concepts that can help you if you are struggling with something that might be foundational, something that you may have learned in the past and don't remember. Uh, it's a good place to check out if you're struggling with something. Math is a really visual subject, so I strongly encourage you to access the videos. Just listening to to the audio is not going to give you the full experience. So either joining me live through Zoom, even if you don't want to talk to me, that's fine. Just watching is fine. Uh, or watching the replays on YouTube are really going to set you up for the most success. If you don't have access to the reliable internet, that means these options are uh, inaccessible for you. Let me know and I'm happy to send you a copy of the recordings so that you still get the full experience. If you have any questions or concerns, please reach out and contact me. You can email me at bronwyn.slade at nnec.on.ca. You can connect with me through Facebook at bslatewaza. Give me a call at the office at 807-737-1488, extension 2209, or toll-free 1-800-667-3703. My office hours currently are Monday through Friday, nine, sorry, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m., though I am available to connect with you outside of those hours if they don't work for you. Just connect with me and we can figure out something that works for both of us. All right, we are on to unit two today, lesson six, which is buying decisions. 
So our learning goals for today's lesson is that by the end of this lesson, you will understand the best buy in a variety of situations. You will understand why companies offer purchasing incentives and the different kinds that are common. And you'll be able to convert Canadian dollars, so CAD, to US dollars, USD, and from US dollars to Canadian dollars. So our success criteria, knowing that you've met the learning goals because you can calculate unit prices and decide upon the best buy. You can explain the benefits of various purchasing incentive programs and you can calculate Canadian dollars to US dollars conversions. All right, but first let's do some mental math and activate our brain. I don't believe in mad math minutes that put focus on speed and memorization. I find that these facts, this method of helping students learning their facts really doesn't work and doesn't set students up for success. So instead of using that as a tool, we develop strategies that you can use in various situations that develop comfort and understanding with numbers. So you can actually apply this in lots of situations opposed to just memorizing facts that don't help you in other situations. So our question today is 92 divided by six, and we're gonna be using the strategy of multiplying up. Division is something that many folks struggle with. And so it's great to have a couple of different tools instead of just hoping that you can understand the algorithm and just follow the steps and memorize the steps and hope for the best. So we're gonna use multiplying up, which means we're gonna be using our brains to think logically to get as close to get to do 92 divided into six groups. So what this means is that we're actually going to start with our divisor, the number that we are dividing by. And we're gonna see how many groups of that, of six fit into 92 as close as we can go. So I'm gonna say, okay, well six, sorry, I'm gonna say it differently. I'm gonna say, I know that 10 groups of six equals 60. So I know that at least 10 groups of six fits into 92 things, 92 things will fit, but I still need more. So I'm gonna say, well, I can look and say, well, another 60, another 10 groups, another 60 things is gonna be more than 92, but I can see that five groups of six. So that is half of 10 groups. So half of 60 is 30, is also gonna fit, because now that added together is 90. So I can see now, can I fit any more groups if I have 90, I've organized 90 of my things and I only have two more things. Well, I can see that I can't get any more whole groups of six. So that means that I have to have, I only have 15 groups of six, of whole groups of six can fit into, into 92. So 92 divided by six is gonna be 15 with the remainder of two. I have two left over that I can't deal with. And that's how we can use the idea of multiplying up. So I did 10 times six gave me 60. And then I did five times six gave me 30. And then I saw that that was, that added up to 90. So that means that 15 groups times six equals 90. And that's how I was able to figure out that 92 divided by six is equal to 15 with a remainder of two. All right, mine's on. What do we need to think about before we dive into today's new content? So we wanna do a little bit of capacity and mass, mass conversions. Um, when we're doing Best Buy and looking at prices, things often are per unit of measurement. So per milliliters, uh, liters, kilograms, grams, milligrams, things like that. So first looking at converting capacity units. So this is when you're talking about volume of liquids and solids, it's measured in capacity. And in the metric system, so we're gonna be talking about in Canada, we use the metric system. So we're gonna be talking about the liter unit or L is our unit of measurement. So that one liter is our base, is our standard unit. And so then in order to figure out if we are converting, if we're in liters, then if we wanna to convert 
two milliliters, we times it by a thousand because one liter is equal to a thousand milliliters. If we are in milliliters and we want to convert it into liters, we're going to divide by a thousand again because one liter is equal to a thousand milliliters. In terms of liters, we generally don't use kiloliters or megaliters. Those aren't uh, two units that we use too often in just our day to day. So more are going to be focusing on liters and milliliters. Those are more realistic in our day to day lives. So in converting mass, so weight is it's very similar to converting capacity. So again, grams is our standard unit. Our one gram is our one unit of measure. And so if we're going down to milligrams, we times by a thousand. If we're going up from milligrams to grams, we divide by a thousand. So this is the same with centimeter, with meters and liters and grams are all the same in metric is that from go from one to a milligram. So we times by a thousand to go from one gram up to a kilogram or from one meter up to a kilometer, kilometer, we divide by a thousand. So to go from a bigger one to a smaller one, we're gonna multiply. To go from a smaller unit to a bigger unit, we're going to divide. And by a thousand, depending on if we're going from milligrams to grams to kilograms and then tons if you were going that large. So this is just something to remember and come back to as we're going through our lesson today. Um, we may need to convert units. And so it's important to remember this um, method of having to convert. All right, so what are we doing new today? What are our new concepts? So first off, when will you use this in real life? So we are strengthening our ability to think critically. Not all of um, these, the skills that we are developing or the concepts that we talk about in our class feel like things that we are going to be using every day. But our ability to think critically and make decisions are something that we are going to be needing to do every day. Many of the things that we're talking about today and in this course we do use are practical things that we do use frequently. But again, being able to think critically and make decisions is something that no matter what you're doing in life, you're going to need to be able to do. So that's what we're strengthening our ability to do. All right, first we're going to talk about unit prices. So this is on page three of your IL booklet. We're in the second package now, right, in unit two. So unit price is the total price for a package divided by the number of units or items in the package. So it often could be, so it's dollars, so price per one liter, or the dollar per egg would be the unit price, or the dollar per one kilogram, the dollars per 100 grams. Uh, grams are really small, so sometimes they do this where it's 100 grams, even though that doesn't feel like it's one gram, um, but sometimes it might just be by one gram. So unit price is always dollars per one thing that it is that you are buying either one item or one measure unit of measurement. So let's calculate the unit price for the following. Let's look at what this actually means. So for example, we have three pounds of onions for $2.47. So to figure out the unit price, so how much, so what that means for this situation is that we have, we want dollars per pound, dollars per one pound. So we're always knowing what your unit price is to figure out your division. You're always gonna do your dollars. We're always, right now, because we're talking about price, unit price is how much per, for one unit, for $1. So $2 and 47 cents divided by three pounds is going to give us, using our calculator, is gonna be $2.47. Sorry, my, I forgot that for some reason my calculator doesn't, isn't happy with me. 
divided by three is equal to 0 0.82 dollars, so 82 cents per pound. So I said this wrong before. I said this is per unit price is per uh, one dollar. It's not per dollar. It's how many dollars per one unit, per one pound, per one kilogram, per one egg, whatever. So that means that for these onions, it is 82 cents for one pound of onions. So still in terms of the box of cereal for the second example, we have dollars per gram because we're saying how many dollars per grams of cereal. So we have $4.67 divided by 354 grams is equal to, and this could be really useful if you are trying to compare two different boxes. So say you have one box that is 30, 350, 45 grams and you have one box that is 500 grams, you don't know which one is the better buy, which one's more expensive. So if converting it to unit price means that we know that, oh, I didn't actually look at the number. Uh, it is 0 0.0135, so 0 0.014 uh, cents or dollars per gram. Now this is a case where you may go smaller than the two decimal places for money because 0 0.01, so it's one cent per gram, um, but looking at the other decimal place, it does add up over time. So grams are really small. So that's why sometimes we do a per 100 grams opposed to per gram. Okay, let's keep going. So if we have 12 bags of popcorn for $5.99, so we're looking for dollars per bag is going to be our unit price. So $5.99 divided by 12 is going to figure out how much one bag of popcorn is equivalent to. And we're going to keep looking, we're going to keep comparing so you can see. So this is 0 0.499. So if we're going to, so basically it's 50 cents per one bag of popcorn. And then if you're doing cans of pop, so we're looking for dollars per can. So 24 cans of pop for $10.47. So we have $10.47 divided by 24 is equal to $0.44 cents per can. And this is how you can see that buying a case of can of pop, you get one can of pop for 44 cents. Whereas if you just buy a can of pop from the freezer, like or from the fridge of the cash in a store and they charge you a dollar fifty, they're making more money off of you because you're buying an individual, it's convenient, opposed to buying a whole case of pop. That's why sometimes it makes more sense to buy things in bulk. In bigger amounts, you get it for a smaller unit price. All right, so now let's look at another example of how we can compare this, how this might be useful information. So we have a two liter glass bottle of mayonnaise sells for $5.49 and a 500 milliliter squeezable plastic bottle of the same brand of mayonnaise costs $2.39. Calculate the unit price per liter for each bottle. So what we're trying to do is figure out which one of these is the better buy, which one is it, does it make more sense to buy? So one thing to notice is that our liters, our units are different. We have two liters compared to 500 milliliters. So we wanna convert those into, so we wanna decide, are we gonna be talking about milliliters or are we gonna talk about liters? Which one do we wanna do? So that we're comparing the same thing. So why don't we, you can do either one, either one is fine, but why don't we say that, think that two liters, is equal to how many milliliters? So it's two times 1,000 is equal to 2,000 milliliters. 
the price is still gonna be the same, but it's just that we're talking about 2000 milliliters. So in that now we're talking, if we use that as our amount, then we are can compare. So we wanna do dollars per milliliter for both. We want them to be in the same units so that we actually know what it is that we're comparing. So I'm gonna do $5.49 divided by 2000 is equal to is equal to 0 0.002745. And I'm gonna write out all of it just so that I can see because this is a really small amount so I can compare. So that's how many, how much money it is per one milliliter if you buy the glass jar. If you buy the plastic bottle, the squeezable plastic bottle that's cheaper, it's $2.39 divided by 500 milliliters is equal to 2.39 divided by 500 is equal to 0 0.00478. That's how many dollars per milliliter. So those are the, oh, uh, I just realized that the question says to do it per liter, not to do it per milliliter. So now what I'm going to do, so I, instead of converting it to milliliters, I should have converted it to liters at the beginning. Sorry about that. Again, you can totally do it this way and then convert it to milliliter to liters at the end. So what that means is I'm just going to divide my amount by a thousand to convert it into uh, liters because the numbers are so small, it's hard to compare, right? So that means that I'm going to get, it's going to be $2 and 74.5 cents. So really to say $2 and 75 cents per liter. And this one, we're going to convert to liters. We're going to divide it by A thousand. So I, because I converted it to milliliters first instead of liters, and I didn't read the whole question, I have to do a little bit more work. So that's why important to read the whole question. So we can see the glass bottle is two dollars and seventy-five cents per liter, whereas the plastic bottle is four dollars and seventy-eight cents per liter. So you can see it's a really big difference. It's two whole, two whole more dollars just to have the smaller amount, and to have it in the squeezable bottle. So even though that price is cheaper, in the long run, it's not actually going to be cheaper for you. You still need to decide what makes more sense for you right now. I'm not saying that financially this is the glass bottle is the better buy, but within the context of your life, it might not be. So which of the two container gives you more for your money? The two liter glass bottle gives you more for your money. All right, moving on. So two types of cheese are on sale. Determine the unit price per 100 grams to find the best buy. So with this one, we have one type of cheese that is 400 grams for $4. So the first cheese is $4.99 per 400 grams. And the second cheese is $9.29 for 908 grams. So it seems like the second one, $9.29 is more, it's more expensive, it is, but you get more cheese. So it's like, which one is actually the better buy? Which one do you get more cheese for your money opposed to, are you just getting more cheese or are you just spending more money? Thinking about it per unit price means that we're talking about, we're comparing it like it's the same. 
So we're going to do this per 100 grams, which means that we're going to divide it the same way that we were doing before. So $4.99 divided by 400. That would tell us what it is per one gram. So that is 0 0.012475. So that's how many dollars it is per gram. So to figure out how much it is per 100 grams, we need to multiply it by 100 in order to change it into 100 grams so that we can compare not such a small amount. And this is like what we just did with the liters. So we multiply that by 100 and we're going to get $1.25 per 100 grams. Okay, so then for the second one, how much we're going to do it, we're going to do the same thing is that we're going to divide $9.29 by 908 grams and that tells us how much it is per one gram. So 0 0.01023, and it keeps going, but I'm going to stop there. I'm going to do it to five decimal places. It's pretty good. It's going to give us enough information. So that's how many dollars it is per one gram. So to do it per 100 grams, we're going to times it by 100 grams. Um, to change the units is equal to one dollar and two cents per 100 grams. So between the two, we can see that to, for the same amount of cheese, if we were just were buying 100 grams of this kind of cheese, that the second one would be the better buy because it's a dollar and two cents per hundred grams opposed to the other one, which is a dollar and 25 cents per hundred grams. All right, so now you should be able to do the practice or the support questions on page four, questions one and two. All right, now let's look incentives to buy. So this is on page five of your IL booklet. And an incentive is something that motivates an individual to perform an action, such as making a purchase, completing a survey, or signing up for a mailing list. So the incentive is trying to get you to do something for the company. So often price reduction, so rebates, coupons on, for dollars off, or percentages off, or buy one, get one free types of offers. These are all incentives to get you to buy at their store. Loyalty programs like punch cards or point systems, such as buy 10 coffees and get the 11.3, or frequent flyer miles and insurance discounts given based on a consecutive number of years insured with the company. Those are all, if you continue to spend money at this company because you've been loyal to them, they're giving you a deal on something. Free samples, uh, the sample itself, such as diapers or baby formula are mailed to expectant parents. Uh, this is an incentive. gets you to want to buy those because you've experienced them. Bonus product with product trial. So if you test drive a motorcycle, then you get a pair of free sunglasses or something like that. If you try something out, then they're going to give you something. A bonus product with purchase. So if you buy $100 worth of cosmetics, then you get a free cosmetic carrying case. So again, if you spend a certain amount of money, they give you something for free. A free upgrade with purchase. So buy a car and get free floor mats. So again, if you get something improved about the thing that you're purchasing, if you buy it with them. Trade up programs. So bring in your infant car seat and get a discount on a toddler car seat. So returning something that you've used, uh, returning it to the store, and then you get a discount on something that you're going to purchase from them as well. Same thing with like if you are uh, turning in your phone or your computer or something and getting a rebate or exchanging it to in terms of that money coming off of your next purchase with them. Options at time of purchase. So you can buy an RV and get a choice of either a free generator or free set extended warranty. So 
you get to choose free things when you buy with them, potentially. Sweepstakes and prizes. So complete our survey and be entered into our free draw. Um, so for example, here at WASA, if you register with us in the in September and you hand in your first two lessons by I believe the middle or beginning of October, um, you'll get put into a draw to win an iPad. So we're incenting, we're giving you the incentive to get your register and get your work in, and then you can win a prize um, because you're starting your course and you're actually getting the ball rolling. Uh, free information, give us your contact information to receive our free white paper, or take a survey and we'll send you the industry-wide results. Um, this often happens online is that if you give them your information, then they say they're gonna give you something um, often like blog posts and things like that. If you want a free newsletter of this thing, then give us your email and then we'll send you stuff. And then promotional items, Shop, stop by our trade show booth and we'll give you a free smartphone holder. Uh, this often promotional items is often something that uh, happens a lot in our communities so here's an example of how that can work out so best buy offers 500 points for every 50 dollars spent at their store how many points is best buy offering for every one dollar spent at their store if andre buys a high definition blu-ray player for 450 dollars how many points will Best Buy give him? So this is two has two parts. So first we need to figure out the unit price for the points. So how many points per dollar is what it's asking. So points per $1. So that means that we have to do 500 points divided by $50 is equal to what? And I should be able to do that in my head, but I'm having a day. 10 points per $1. So for every $1 you spend at Best Buy, you get 10 points per $1. So for Andre, if he had spent $450, that means how many points? So you can say, well, how you figure this out is you do $450 times 10 points, sorry, 10 points per $1. So that means that you're going to multiply it by 10 and divide by one. So multiplying by 10 is 4,500 divided by one is still 4,100. So you're going to get 4,100. Andre is going to get 4,100, 500 points. See? Sorry, I'm saying the wrong things. But that's how much points we get. That doesn't necessarily mean that he can spend 10 points for $1 does not mean that you get $1 for 10 points. So that is the trick with these sorts of incentive programs is that you can have a whole bunch of points, but they might only be worth 10 cents, who knows. So now you can do the support questions, page five to six, questions three to five. All right, and the last thing that we're looking at today is understanding currencies. So this is on page seven of your IELTS booklet. And first we need to answer the question, do all countries use the same currency? So currency means money. So currency refers to the money used in a particular country. So in Canada, we use the Canadian dollar. In France, they use euros. In Mexico, they use Mexican pesos. In Japan, they use yen. So depending on where you are, different, you might have different language, different words for money, uh, the currency of that country. Countries decide what type of money will have legal tender in their territory. So for example, in 1999, France chose to replace francs with euros. So they used to have a different type of money, but then they changed it to euros, which means that when you're in France, you use euros. But then if you were to go to another country in Europe that also use euros, you don't need to change your money. 
So that's why France, um, very many countries in Europe decided to do that, that they would use euros. But not all countries in Europe decided they had to, they decided that each individual country decided that. So you can go to the world currency symbols um, here, if you, this link, which I'll put in our show notes. Um, you click here, then you can see that for some reason it is not letting me go there. So I will put an actually working link to show you here. Let's, here you can see uh, some examples of what different euro, what different currencies look like. Um, but I'll put a working link in the show notes so that you can actually go and see all the different currencies in the world. But here you can see the US dollar uses a dollar symbol um, and USD is a short form. Here down here, we have Canadian dollar, which also uses a dollar symbol. Australian dollar also uses a dollar symbol. Singapore dollar also uses a dollar symbol. New Zealand dollar also uses a dollar symbol. Here, uh, this, in Canada, we don't say C dollar symbol, we just say dollar symbol because we're in Canada. In New Zealand, they're just gonna use a dollar symbol. They're not gonna say NZ, NZ dollar. Um, but this is when we are talking about different countries, these different dollars have different values. And so that's why we indicate um, this graphic I obviously got from a US site so that they, uh, say US dollar is just a dollar symbol, but really it should have a US to make sure that we know that it's dollar symbol, a US dollar. Anyway, there's also euros, which is this symbol, pounds, which is this pound symbol in Great Britain, um, an Indian rupee, a Russian ruble. There's various, as you can see, lots of different symbols depending on where you are in the world. So if you're gonna be somewhere else in the world, it's really good to know what their symbols mean. So then how is the value of the Canadian dollar determined? Because all money is not equal in the world. It rises or falls every day because the Bank of Canada lets it float, meaning it varies according to demand. The more people want to buy Canadian products, the more our dollar is worth. So what is an exchange rate? The price of one currency compared to another is what an exchange rate is. So you have to be talking about, are you talking about Canadian to American dollars, are you talking about Canadian to Japanese yens? The exchange rate is going to be different. How much is the value of that compared to the other one? So let's go to this link. Hopefully it's going to work for me today. Yes. So xrates.com is a calculator that shows you the various rates of money compared to you can convert money $1 from all sorts of currencies in the world to all sorts of other currencies in the world. So using online calculators can be really helpful to figure out what your exchange rates are um, because these are changing every day. Even if the things that I put in our PowerPoint are gonna be not quite right because this is done as of right this second and this is constantly changing. So if you want to get current to the second information, you go to xrates.com, uh, but, or just search up current currency rates, exchange rates online, um, but it's okay to have a rough approximations because it's constantly changing. So here is uh, an example of converting. So one US dollar is one US dollar, one Great Britain pound is one Great Britain pound. This is just a, a way of organizing information so that you can see them compared. So one Canadian dollar equals how much of each other country's currency. So if we go to exchange rate, we can go and we can find that out um, and write it in. So then how do we actually convert from Canadian dollars to US dollars. And again, this is on page seven of your IL booklet. So you can use that online currency. You can just go in and convert it, but understanding how to do it is also important. So when many people from the US visit Canada, they pay with US dollars. That happens here in Sulacot all the time. So it currently is about 
one Canadian dollar is about 0 0.78673 US dollars. And this was true when I made this PowerPoint. It might be slightly different today in this moment because that money changes constantly. So that means that for every $1 purchase in Canada, Americans pay just about 79 cents in US dollars. So how do we actually calculate that? So when we're in doubt, setting up ratios really makes the most sense. So put whatever you want on the top to figure this out. So let's look at an example. Greta is visiting Sioux Lookout from Minnesota and she buys a wagon at Red Apple before, obviously I wrote this, before, I wrote this out last year before Red Apple had their ceiling caved in um, for $100 and $186.65, taxes included. So don't worry about tax. How much US dollars does she have to pay? So how we figure this out is what we're trying to say is that we want to know how much US dollars, that's what we're looking for. So we're going to put that on the top, is equal to $1 and $186.65 Canadian dollars. So using the ratio that we just have, where $1 is equal to 79 US dollars, we say, sorry, US cent, 0 0.79 US dollars, 79 cents is equal to one Canadian dollar. So that means in order to figure out what this is, we're going to multiply both sides by $186.65. And I'm gonna, so we're looking for the US dollars because this cancels off when we were comparing it. If we do it to one side, we're gonna do it to the other side. So that means that we're going to get US dollars because these are gonna cancel off. And so we're going to do seventy nine cents times one hundred and eighty six dollars and sixty five cents divided by one dollar is equal to one hundred and forty seven dollars and forty five cents. So Greta pays $147.45 in American dollars or in US dollars. So it's the same value, but she has to pay less money because she's using money that has more value. Um, looks like I, okay. So now you can do the support questions on page eight, question number six. So then how do you, how is the value of the Canadian dollar determined? How do we figure it out the other way? So one of another country's currency is equal to this many Canadian dollars. So again, we can look at the graph and fill that out, but we're not gonna do that right now. So, when we're changing from US dollars to Canadian dollars, so if we were to shop online at American stores, the conversion factor changes again daily and is currently about one US dollars is about $1.27. So for every time that you purchase something in American, you are that's $1, you're gonna spend $1.27 in Canada. So again, let's use the ratios to figure this out. So Ty buys a smartwatch on amazon.com for $225.99, tax included. How much Canadian dollars does she spend? So again, we're looking for Canadian dollars. So we're gonna put that on top. So Canadian dollars divided by the American money, $225.99. Remember you can shop from amazon.ca, which is Canadian dollars, or you can sometimes end up shopping from amazon.com, which is gonna be American dollars. So then you divide it. So then you're gonna say that this is equal to how much $1 and 20, 
seven cents Canadian divided by one dollar American. So how do we figure that out? We're going to multiply both sides by the 225.99 in order to get it just to be $1 Canadian. So that means that we're gonna do $225.99 times $1.27 all divided by one dollar for us is going to figure out how many canadian dollars we need so using our calculator gives us 287 dollars and 21 cents So that's how much Ty is gonna to have to spend in Canadian dollars. So if you want to only use one Canadian dollar conversion, you don't wanna to have to remember the two different ones. You can still use this to convert. You can still use that one Canadian dollar equals 0.78 six seven three us dollars you can always use this to convert canadian to us dollars this same way so how you would do it is that if we want to convert 386 dollars and 13 cents us to canadian we want canadian dollars so what that means is that we're going to say canadian dollars on top is what we're looking for divided by 386 dollars and 13 cents US dollars is equal to, and we want the Canadian part on top. So we want it to be equal to one Canadian dollar over 0 0.78673 US dollars. Because we want Canadian dollars, we put Canadian dollars on the top. So that means that we put Canadian dollars on the top on one side, we're gonna put Canadian dollars on the other side, on the top. So that means that in order to get Canadian dollars by itself, we're gonna multiply both sides by $386.13 to cancel off the, on this side. And this is algebra. And if you're unsure what I'm doing, going to uh, my YouTube channel and uh, checking it out under some algebra there i believe there's some videos there that are going to help you so that means that these cancel off and so we're left with just canadian dollars and we need to calculate our and over here so we're going to do one divided by 0 0.78673 all times $386.13, and that is $490.80. And so you can still, you could always use this one ratio, or you just have to pay attention to if you're looking for Canadian dollars or American dollars and put what you're looking for on the top. So now you can do the practice problems on page 10, questions seven through eight. All right, so let's consolidate what we've learned today. So our highlights from buying decisions, lesson six, is that the unit price is often thought of as the best buy and more is not always better. You need to decide what's right for your reality. But unit price is defined by Pound, dollars per pounds or dollars per liter or dollar per t-shirt, it's dollars per one thing. And we talked about incentive programs and how they, they motivate individuals to buy something, but it's not always a better deal. So you need to, again, decide for yourself what actually makes sense. Do you really need another pair of sunglasses to, to buy a motorcycle? To buy a motorcycle, do you really need to 
another pair of sunglasses? Do you really want the promotional items or to give away your email address? You decide for yourself. And then currency and conversions where Canadian dollar is equal to approximately 0 0.79 US dollars. Whatever it is in your booklet, because again, this changes constantly, this changes daily, and I'm not going to update it every single day in your booklet, that doesn't work. So use whatever the, the currency rate is that's in your booklet in order to do your calculations. That is completely fine. You do not need to do what is the most accurate, most up-to-date information. Just use what is in your booklet. So our success, success criteria are that you can calculate unit prices and decide upon the best buy. You can explain the benefits of various purchasing incentive programs, and you can calculate Canadian dollars to US dollar conversions. Okay. So if you have any questions or concerns, please reach out and connect with me. Give me a call at the office at 807-737-1488, extension 2209. You can also call us toll free at 1-800-667-3703. Send me an email at bronwyn.slate, and that's spelled B-R-O-N-W-Y-N dot S-L-A-T-E at N-N-E-C dot O-N dot C-A. Connect with me through Facebook, where my name is B Slate Wasa. B Slate is all one word, and then Wasa is the last name on the Facebook account. Uh, you can give me or connect with me at uh, my YouTube channel, which is also under the name B Slate Wasa. All of our lessons are under a playlist called MEL3E. So you can find all of our current lessons there, as well as some other resources from other videos that I made or past times that I've taught this course. So everything's there on my YouTube channel for you to find. My office hours are Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. So though I teach from nine until 11. So that is not a great time to try to get a hold of me. But if that time doesn't work to connect and you'd like to arrange a time where we can work specifically together, let me know and we can try to accommodate that based on both of our schedules. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope this was useful for wrapping up lesson four. Mugwitch.